Hi, I'm Chris from Air Windows, and hey, you can do this. Because this is Air Windows purest saturation. So you may ask, what's that about? Well, I've been busy doing a whole bunch of things. Uh, this happens to be one of them. This is the saturation stuff that you got in Verb Thick for the purposes of making stuff a little bit more forward, a little bit fuller. And the thing about it is it's not dissimilar to what I did when I was making Tape Hack. Both of those things are simply readjustments of what's called the Taylor series uh, sign approximation that come to their own distinct uh, maximum sample levels. And the thing about Tape Hack is it was very tricky. It was a way of trying to reproduce a behavior that I heard about from somebody who's finding some good success making hardware along those lines. So that gave me the idea to try to reproduce the behavior in a limited way in a very simple code, just as a transfer function. Transfer function means all it does is it's a soft saturation. Well, this is different. Purest saturation is one of my weird experiments, let's just say. And I'm going to show you what each of those things sound like on actual audio, even a sine wave. But basically, the way that Tape Hack makes a uh, saturation happen is it's giving a sort of bump in the medium uh, volume. It's a little hard to explain. It's trying to approximate a behavior where the quietest sounds get sucked out just a tiny little bit as if you were in the uh, bias zone of a tape recording where not all your sound was coming through at full volume. It's a little bit of a dynamic behavior. So pure saturation is a little bit different. What's happening there is I am trying to reproduce a sine style saturation function. And you've seen these with my stuff for years and years and years and years. One of the first things I ever did, uh, density. That's variations on sine or the opposite of sine. And I've always turned to a simple sine function for making stuff fuller and thicker and more forward because that's what happens when you put on a soft saturation and the change between the angle of the soft saturation is as gentle as possible. It's like a theoretical maximum. This is a little bit different because when you're making a Taylor series, what you're doing is taking your input sample level and multiplying it by itself and then, say, subtracting that in a, a much smaller proportion and then you multiply it by itself again, and you add that in an even smaller proportion. And then you multiply it by itself again, and you subtract it again by an even smaller proportion. And the understandably, if you're multiplying the value by itself so many times, you wind up with some enormous numbers if it's a, a large number. And that's how you make a sign um, representation where the waveform not only softens and rounds off, but it turns around and makes an entire sine wave waveform is this Taylor series approximation. But what if you took all of the tiny corrections that are being made every time you're taking a larger and larger value potentially and applying a smaller piece of it? And it's all these very abstract numbers which are real specific. What if instead of that, all of those numbers were just gain changed by bit, shift, gain? Rather than being the correct value, it is always a factor of 6.08 dB. No more, no less. 
Say you get six, you get 12, you get 18, you get so forth, on and on ad infinitum. What that does is it takes the mantissa of the input waveform, so your input sample, if you're doing that, all you're changing is the exponent of the number when you're applying it. So there is a degree of accuracy in there. There's a problem. The problem is that the um, thing that you're subtracting or adding or whatever is the power function of the input sample multiplied by itself that many times. So it's never going to be exactly the same mantissa of the input waveform. We're kind of just messing around here in efforts of trying to do something interesting. This may be complete nonsense. You're going to have to go by what it sounds like to you. But what this is, much like tape hack, is carefully calculated and tuned so that it produces that particular effect. This one's carefully calculated and tuned so whatever effect it produces is whatever you get when that power function is gain changed by only exponent shifting. There's a goodly number of factors being added and subtracted to the gain stage of this. And every single addition or subtraction is gain scaled up or down by only changing the exponent. I've also gone a little beyond the beyond here and kept that uh, interim value as a long double precision value. So it's all, it's all entirely too extreme. And who is to, well, uh, rather than who is to say, have a listen. Here is a link it. it's here again. I can show you tape pack. Tape pack has a sort of beefy fuller sound. You get a certain thickness out of it. Turn it back off. And then we'll turn on pure saturation. But wait, that's too easy. What if I pick something else, like for instance, a rock track? And we'll even uh, loop it. And then our input goes to input 0 0.5. Now when I turn on tape pack, we're slamming it. But we're slamming pure saturation by exactly the same amount. I just double clicked that and in this program in Reaper, it'll give me a 0 0.5. So that is a great deal of boost. And, and tape hack. So that's pretty big. But then here is pure saturation in exactly the same setting. And right through the screen like horror. Here's tape hack. Here's pure saturation. Tape hack. Pure saturation. Try through the screen like horror from Japan. And they sang Discord welcome. And seeing as we're padding the output of it, we can just go full tilt bozo and multiply the gain by 10. And check it out. This time I'm going to kick in first tape hack and then pure saturation. And we'll see if we hear anything different among them. And Discord is right through the screen like horror. Pure saturation. Here 
So I'll tell you what I think I'm hearing and why this is interesting to me. TAPAC is able to do this particular kind of density and fullness and sock to it, which feels more like tape than just running a straight sign one does. What's happening in pure saturation is a little bit weird, like funny details are poking out in a way that, um, well, it's a little hard to express, honestly. I do have another piece of audio that I can play, and that is a simple sine wave. So let's shut these off again and jump back in one more time. Tape pack. Here's how that goes. Then pure saturation. And go back and forth. Tape back. Pure saturation. So they're both pretty smooth. They're both soft saturations. But what I am hearing, and for, just for funsies, let me take a moment as long as I have that going, and uh, halfway. What I hear there is the lower mids have a certain fullness going on. There's something that feels like tape saturation going on there, but that is not what pure saturation is about. Instead, there is this sort of image of both the sign and the overload on it. That is showing up with a certain kind of clarity There is an even lower gain level. I don't know if I can get exactly the same numbers. The tape hack one feels like it's connected to the sound a little bit more, whereas the purest saturation one, there is a degree to which that feels like there's more clarity and separation between the underlying tone and the uh, distortion components being added. I should leave it at that because what you need to do is play with this one rather than hear me telling you about it. Thing is, with a bit of luck I can get use out of this. For instance, there is a plugin that I've been working on for a while. You know Pointy Guitar? I have one in line that is to be called Punchy Guitar, and even a Punchy Deluxe. But uh, rather than doing the Pointy Guitar saturation function or a compression, it uses the sign. Well, what if instead we used, and initially I was going to be like, well, why don't I use Tape Pack for that? And it's a fine idea. But what if I use this one? It's maybe a little more complicated than tape hack, but I feel there is an extent to which it's articulating performance details around things that would work in a guitar amp. And who is to say where else that might find a place? I've got uh, an extension of tape hack built into the console X2 that I've been working on and console H. 
But what if the future isn't about just emulating tape? What if the future is more about making behaviors in sound that do something useful? But that's, I will get back to work on that one because what I'm giving you today is literally just pure saturation. I am showing it and tape hack with tape hack obscuring its dry wet control. Dry wet control is something that tape hack had and pure saturation being one of your super ultra simple ones, it only has input and output. It's got the same input thing of 0.1 as unity gain and then turning it to one makes it uh, uh, 10x gain. So it gives you a certain amount of additional boost in there. And then there is a simple output volume. And since it's the purest plugin, if the output volume is at one, it bypasses itself and just only uses the multiplications that are necessary to, to do its job. But yeah, I don't know whether you're going to, I mean, you, if both of those things sounded exactly the same to you, that's fine. This is almost on dither grade as far as fooling around with stuff and actually making obvious changes. This is me tweaking my saturation algorithms. And furthermore, not only is it me tweaking my saturation algorithms, there is no reason to use what I have done in pure saturation other than playing with my weird changing the exponent and keeping only the mantissa exactly the same. And it's not even doing it on the input sample. It's doing it on a calculation that's being done in long double, granted, where it's input sample times input sample times input sample over and over again to do this Taylor series, where we make this approximation of a sine wave. I'm essentially using the wrong values to make an approximation of the sine wave. Instead of the mathematically correct ones, I'm using the ones that let me do this trick with keeping the mantissa the same from the intermediate value. Whether that produces useful sounds, that's gonna be very much up to you. I'm interested in fooling with it, and there are things I hear in there that sound kinda of neat, but I am at a loss to define like how you explain why that would sound good in any sensible way, cause it shouldn't make the damn bit of difference. This is just one where I am pushing in that direction as hard as I possibly can to see what happens. On that note, I'm here every week, so I will be here next week with a more sensible plugin, most likely. If I'm lucky, it might even be a update on meter because I'm working on an update on meter that'll work better for building into console X2 and console H one that has a little more colorful effect and tells you more interesting things if you know how to read it. And that's going pretty well. In fact, I have a, uh, I went and played the fixes. One thing leads to another for my $10 and up patrons for my stuff uh, shown in Air Windows Meter, the hit record stuff. And this time I used the new in process dark meter that I'm working on, which is also, you could call it a color meter because it's doing the same chart, but it's making colored dots and the colored dots have to do with what the slew is doing. And I've also got the zero cross meter combining with, I'm doing a lot of stuff. I will get back to work, which also includes making this video. I'll be here next week. And I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.